May 26, 2020 at 7.30 p.m. via teleconference. Prayer will be offered by City Clerk Susan Lovering and Dave Tenza will lead us in the Pledge to the Flag. Almighty God, we have the high honor and the serious duty to manage the affairs of our beloved city. Fill us, O oh God, with a spirit of unity and understanding, which enables us to face our multiple problems with a serene mind, with justice and charity for all, so that any and all decisions made by us will always be for the betterment and greater happiness of all our fellow citizens. So help us, God. Amen. 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 I pledge I pledge allegiance to of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. As president of the Board of Aldermen, I find that due to the state of emergency declared by the governor as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, and in accordance with the governor's emergency order, well, we went to executive order 2020-4, this public body is authorized to meet electronically. Please note that there is no physical location to observe and listen contemporaneously to this meeting. Which was, which was authorized pursuant to the governor's emergency order. However, in accordance with the emergency order, I am confirming that we are providing public access to the meeting by telephone with additional access possibilities by video or other electronic means. We are utilizing WebEx through the city's IT department for this electronic meeting. All members of the Board of Aldermen have the ability to communicate contemporaneously during this meeting through this platform, and the public has access to contemporaneously listen to this meeting through dialing the following number, 978-990-5298. Madam President, you've gone mute. Thank you. Sorry, I'll start back at the, <laughs> the public has access to contemporaneously listen to this meeting through dialing the following number, 978-990-5298 and using the password 273-974. The public may also view this meeting on Comcast channel 16. We are providing public notice of the necessary information for accessing the meeting. We previously gave notice to the public of the necessary information for accessing the meeting through public posting. Instructions have also been provided on the city of Nashua's website at nashuanh.gov and publicly noticed at City Hall and the Public Health Department. Getting a lot of feedback. Yeah. We are providing a mechanism for the public to alert the public body during the meeting if there are problems with access. If, any, if anyone has a problem accessing the meeting via phone or channel 16, please call 603-821-2049 and they will help you connect. We will adjourn the meeting if the public is unable to access the meeting. In the event the public is unable to access the meeting via the method mentioned above, the meeting will be adjourned and rescheduled. Please note that all votes that are taking during this meeting shall be done by roll call vote. Let's start the meeting by taking a roll call attendance. When each member states their presence, please also state whether there is anyone with you in the room during this meeting, which is required under the right to know law, why you are unable to attend in person and who is with you if you can hear us. So would the clerk please call the roll. Alderman O'Brien. I am present, I can hear, I am alone, and I'm practicing social distancing. Alderman Clay. Um, I am here, I am alone at the moment, I am practicing social distancing. My husband and Greyhound are in the house and always make an appearance, thank you. 
Alderwoman Kelly. Good evening. I'm here. I can hear everyone. I'm alone and I am practicing social distancing. Alderman Dowd. Yes, I can hear everyone and um, I am by myself practicing social distancing in accordance with the governor's order. Alderman Karen. Alderman Clemens. Uh, yes, I am here uh, this evening. I am um, staying at home due to the governor's orders and uh, I'm participating via cell phone because I had trouble connecting uh, through WebEx um, and uh, I'm by myself. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Lopez. Yep, I'm here. I'm alone. I am social distancing and I can hear and see everything. Well, as I Alderman Tenza. I'm present. Uh, I can hear everybody and I'm alone. Alderwoman Lou. Yes, I'm here. I'm alone. I'm practicing social distancing. Alderman Jetty. I'm here. I'm alone in the room. Uh, I can hear everyone and I'm staying home in accordance with the orders. Alderman Schmidt. Uh, I am present. Uh, I can hear everyone. And the mm -hmm. only thing with me is a parrot. Otherwise, I am alone. Alderman Laws. Alderman Cleaver. I'm here, here and I'm practicing social distancing according to governor's orders. And I'm alone. Thank you. Alderman Harriet Gathright. I am present, I'm alone, and I am practicing social distancing, and I can hear you. Alderman Wilshire. I am here. I am practicing social distancing. I can hear you, and I am alone. Hello, can anyone hear me? Alderman Karen. Oh, I'm here. I could, I'm sorry, I could not get on line, um, but I'm here, I'm alone and um i can hear everyone thank you thank you president Mosby, you have 14 in attendance thank you mayor donches are you with us this evening sorry i am madam president you wish to address the board uh, yes i would thank you very much you're welcome well of course there are a few things that i wanted to talk to you about tonight madam president uh first of all COVID-19. Uh, currently, Nashua has, I thought I'd give you a very brief update, about 386 cases, uh, positive cases as of this morning. Many of those people have recovered. Unfortunately, 12 people from Nashua have died, which leaves us 75 active cases. Our public health nurses are, of course, working with those patients, as well as following the, doing the contract, the contact tracing, which we've talked about before, the public health nurses identify all the people who've had contact with a, with a positive patient, and then <laughs> counsel instruct those contacts as to how to proceed in terms of quarantining themselves and making sure that they do not spread the <laughs> virus or make sure that they determine that they don't have the virus before they go out into the public or, encounting, or encounter any other people. Uh, we continue to see more cases every day, although that number has slowed down. New Hampshire seems to do, be doing pretty well. But I have to say that it's been a, a, big, a big thing that we've done together, Madam President, and all of us have contributed. Of course, on the front lines are our public health nurses and those who are engaged directly with fighting the virus. You've seen that our public health department, along with the state of New Hampshire, has been testing people regularly at various clinics around the city, but also all of the people who have uh, contributed to making sure that we contain the virus as much as we possibly can. That, of course, includes the Board of Aldermen. You've been as full as you could be in terms of appropriating money to 
uh, make sure that we can keep people at City Hall safe and all of our employees who are out with public contact, making sure they are fully protected, or at least to the maximum we can provide. Also, you, of course, help with the mask ordinance and other steps that we've we've taken. So as we look back on this, Madam President, I believe we will agree and realize that we have saved lives and we will look back and be proud of our community for everything that we did by working together. Now, we're not out of the woods yet, though. We are beginning the reopening of the uh, economy. Director Cummings, Economic Development Director Cummings, has worked very hard as, a, as many staff people with our downtown business community in terms of enabling the outdoor seating in the one travel lane on each side of the street as well as on the sidewalks. So far, that seems to have gone very well. People are very pleased, and certainly the number of diners has increased substantially over what it would have been had the Board of Aldermen uh, not authorized that step at the last meeting. So I want to thank you all very much. But we still need to be cautious because as people begin to come out more and they gather together, uh, they need to be careful. They need to wear masks and make sure that we continue to limit the spread of the disease. Our public health department and others warn that as the economy gradually opens. There could be a spike in cases, uh, which needs to be dealt with through, again, the contract contact tracing and cautious steps uh, in terms of full opening. But we here in Nashville, and I'm sure at the state level, they are evaluating all of this, the evidence, the, the facts, the scientific information, the opinions of the, the medical experts in deciding how to uh, proceed and at what pace to uh, undertake the return to some form of normal. Although we know we'll never be fully, uh, it, probably not for a long time, exactly as we were before. So I, I want to say, Madam President, that the COVID-19 effort is, is going very, very well. Uh, and I know you're all interested, so I wanted to lead off with that. I wanted to mention, Madam President, that Dottie Oliver, who you probably knew, mm -hmm. did, you might have seen the obituary, she passed away recently. She was, although she moved to Durham and has not lived in Nashville for quite some time, she was a very, very significant Nashville. And the reason for that was that, in addition to many other things that she did, she founded the Adult Learning Center. And was the driving force behind getting that going and was the director for the first dozen or so years. Uh, in those days, they did not have initially a home and the Crowley Street School, which is where they are now. And I think uh, Alderman Dowd uh, was, I'm sure he's familiar with that school. <laughs> uh, you might have, and Alderman Dowd may have actually gone there. I, I forget what elementary school you went to. But that school had closed, and so the city, as a result of the very effective and important efforts of Dolly, Dottie Oliver, transferred the building to the Adult Learning Center for one dollar. Now, since those days, they have, they, the Adult Learning Center, have made, made considerable improvements, uh, upgraded everything. They've done a fantastic job in adult education. Uh, with all of the programs they run. Mary Jordan succeeded Dottie and was a longtime director. Uh, now we have Carol Baldwin, and she also has done a good job, so a very good job. So Dottie is the first in a line of directors of that institution that have done very important work for Nashua and for many adults, uh, particularly those who need education and those who need a hand, a hand uh, at the beginning of their their careers. Uh, I thought also, Madam President, I could not let, I, I think I need to mention one item that's on the agenda for the That is the contract with the firefighters. 
And we all, of course, we all like the firefighters. We all respect the firefighters. But I have to be straightforward and say that I don't believe that the city can undertake a contract like this at this time. In the midst of what we anticipate will be significant economic issues. Now, I know that many people um, support the firefighters as I do. I've closed contracts with them certainly in the past and I've been glad to do so. But looking at what we've been presented with, it, it the average is a 4% raise if you look at the costing sheet for four years, compounded 17%. And that would be in place within, by July 1, 2022, or a little over two years. Now, the problem, of course, is that we don't know what we're facing economically. We have, right now, you know, we have more than 8,000 people who filed unemployment claims, national unemployment claims, and are out of work. And those are just people who were working for New Hampshire business. The people who are out of work, who are who had been working in Massachusetts, are not included in those numbers. So conservatively, we can say that right this second, there are 10,000, 10,000 people out of work right in our community. Now, the full economic effects of that have not been felt yet because the federal government, in spending what trillions of dollars, is providing. One thing they're trying to do, but one of, one thing that, that is a good thing that they're trying to do is provide $600 per person per week for all the unemployed people. But that ends soon, ends in July. Or we don't know what we're facing uh, down the road from that. Many cities around New Hampshire, actually, and around the country are actually laying off and furloughing employees. We've been lucky to avoid that so far, but we need to contain costs and be cautious as we go into the next year and the years that follow. All the people, all the economic experts here in New Hampshire, those who understand the New Hampshire property tax, predict that the major impact will not be now or even in fiscal, especially in the first part of fiscal 21 but will be in the year, further on into the year and in fiscal 22 and three. If we build non-sustainable budgets uh, that drive uh, the, a department up basically 17% two years, I just don't think that, I, I know that we cannot sustain that uh, and that we cannot afford the kind of tax increases that that would result. That would result. We know that others will be looking for the same kind of uh, contract if it's granted to one, one employee organization. And again, Madam President, I mean, I know that we as a group, I know the Board of Aldermen has many personal friends that are firefighters. Uh, we've had a good relationship with them over the years. I uh, don't like having to say this, but I believe it's my responsibility to the entire community to do so. Um, we cannot build non-sustainable budgets that we just can't support in the years to come. So I will, I will, um, I don't want to elaborate further, but I wanted to be forthright, put it on the table right at the beginning, and let you know what the, what I believe the picture facing the city is. I know that if we work together, if we continue to fight the virus, if we support the business community, as we have been doing, if we help the small businesses recover, maybe we won't see, hopefully we pray we won't see a big decline in property values, or we won't, or that most people we get back to work quickly. And the strong economy that we had some months ago, pre-COVID-19 will return. But we don't, and I'm confident that it will, but we don't know when. It might take a while. So uh, I, I want to be optimistic, but I think we need to be realistic and cautious. In any event, uh, Madam President, uh, that's what I have for you. And um, I would be, of course, willing to answer any questions if anyone has.
Thank you, Mayor. Uh, response to the remarks of the mayor. Seeing none, recognition period. There is none. Reading minutes of previous meetings. There being no objection, I'll declare the minutes of the Board of Aldermen meetings of May 12, 2020 and May 20th, 2020 accepted, placed on file, and the reading suspended. Communications requiring only procedural actions and written reports from liaisons. Communications have been received from Lori Ortolano regarding assessing concerns in the hiring of a chief. From W.R. Sutton regarding budget. From Robert Guza regarding PAC project. From Lori, Laura Colloquin regarding need to hold on the art center. From Lori Ortolano regarding pandemic muzzling of the public. And regarding misapplied Mason rules are not are used against the public. From Jim Tullis regarding outside renovations of the art center. From Donald C. Davidson, Board of Fire Commissioners, regarding Board of Fire Commissioners approval of the IAFF Local 789 CBA. From Sue Newman, regarding Ordinance 02018. From Kim Kleiner, Administrative Services Director, regarding Administrative Services Division, Nashville School District, response to budget review questions, grant writer. From Dave Winchester, regarding proposal for mandatory face masks. From Adam A. Marku, President, National Teachers Union, regarding approve the Board of Education's request for a 2.25% increase in the FY 2021 budget. From Joshua Tuing, regarding mask mandate. Two communications from Linda McGee, Deputy Planning Manager, regarding referral from the Board of Aldermen on proposed R-2028, authorizing the City of Nashua to enter a master development agreement with Lansing Melbourne Group, LLC, and referral from the Board of Aldermen on proposed R-2033, authorizing the Mayor to execute a confirmatory deed to Penichuk Waterworks, from Tammy Cates regarding against mandatory mask requirement, from Marcy Norse regarding masks, and from Matt Sutton regarding face mask. There being no objection, I'll accept the communications and place them on file. Alderman Clay. Thank you very much. Um, uh, Madam President, there's one communication there for um, a Mrs. Lori Ortolano relative to the pandemic muzzling. Um, I'd like to either have it be resubmitted with signature from the um, sender or to make note that Mrs. Ortolano said that she, in fact, was the author of the blog that she referenced. Okay, well, I will move to accept all communications and place them on file except for that one. Thank you very much. I appreciate You're that. Welcome. You're welcome. Okay. <laughs> Period for public comment relative to items expected to be acted upon this evening. There's none. The public has access to contemporaneously listen to the meeting through dialing the following number, 978-990-5298. Using the password 273-974, public may also view this meeting on Comcast Channel 16. If anyone has a problem accessing the meeting via telephone, for channel 16, please call 603-821-2049 and they will help you connect. You may also submit your comments via email, which will be accepted and placed on file with the minutes of the meeting. Please email your comments to boa at nashuanh.gov. Someone is, somebody needs to mute. Alderman Jetty. Um, so, as as I understand it, the uh, the correspondence that was referred to by Alderman Clee, um, you were asking that the uh, if there was no objection, that all of all of those that list of correspondence that you read would be accepted and placed on file, uh, and the reading waived. Um, Alderm Alderman Clee objected. Um, so there's an objection. So if I could ask attorney Bolton, uh, does that mean that, that the, uh, that the proper step now is to vote on whether or not to 
accept that communication? Attorney Bull. Paul, the way I recall what occurred, uh, the clerk read all of the communications. And before the president uh, did anything, Alderman Klee uh, raised some concerns about one of those communications. Uh, the president indicated that she would exclude that uh, from the ones she would uh, accept and place on file. Uh, she has indicated that all of the others, uh, unless there's an objection, would be accepted and placed on file. Uh, I think the uh, appropriate thing at this point in time is if anyone has objections to any of the other communications, uh, they be raised. If not, there is one communication that is still uh, unaddressed. So people could, uh, any member of the board could move that that be accepted, could move that uh, anything else be done uh, with it. It could be referred to a committee. Uh, it uh, could be responded to in an appropriate way. Uh, before you now is the president's uh, indication that she will accept and place on file all of the other communication. So the most immediate thing facing you is whether anyone objects to any of those communications. Alderman Jenny? No, I have no objection to any of the others. Um, so I, I thought you had uh, said if there was no objection, they would all be accepted, except the uh, the one referenced to by uh, Alderman Clee. So I, I guess I would uh, like to make a motion that that uh, that communication also be accepted and placed on file, and the we, the reading waived. Further discussion on that motion. Alderman Clay. Thank you, um, Madam President. Uh, my objection to this particular um, is that it very specifically states, please include this blog, um, and goes on to um, print the blog that was there. I believe that the blog was, in fact, written by Mrs. Ortolano. Um, I asked her the um, comment to the effect that it was. However, this is going into the public record. If the public were to pick this up, they could think it was nothing more than a National Telegraph article, um, rather than someone's um, personal opinion, the person that, in fact, is asking for it to be there. I just want to make sure that this communication, when it goes in, anybody reading it now or in the future understands that this was, in fact, written by Mrs. Ortolano. It is not signed on the bottom as if it's hers. It nowhere says, this is my blog. And this is why I object to it. I have no problem when she um, indicates that this is her blog for the public record to have it put into the file. Do you have anything further, Alderman Jetty? So is there, if she has admitted that it was hers, can, can't we just note that it was from her? I mean, th this is just a communication from, from a person in the public doesn't mean that anything in it is accurate or inaccurate or true or untrue. You know, the public has a right to to communicate and I, I just don't um, understand why we would exclude that. Um, you know, it, but I, I would, uh, I, I see you have a hand up, so I'll wait. <laughs> Hey, what Alderman, else you've got to say? <laughs> Alderman Clay. Thank you very much. Um, and and I, I don't disagree with you, um, Alderman Jetty. The public has the right to um, put into the uh, public record any of their opinions and so on. I just want it to be noted that the opinion of this blog is, in fact, that of Mrs. Ortolano and that it was not a third party. It wasn't something, perhaps, that was written 
by the National Telegraph or the Manchester Union or any other, even a third party blog. I very specifically um, asked her, who is the author of this? Her comment to me in an email was, you know that it's me. I did not know that it was her. Um, and if it were her, I don't understand why she didn't specifically state, I would like to have my blog put into the public record. Alderman, That's my objection, so, and I apologize. Alderman Lopez and then Alderman Schmidt. Yeah, I just wanted to double check with um, Attorney Bolton's uh, opinion uh, on two different uh, questions. The first is, if we do refuse to accept the communication, um, can we stipulate what is what goes in there? Because it seems like this is just Ms. Ortleano's comment, so it should just be accepted as coming from her, regardless of its veracity. Um, but then the second thing is, um, if we did either refer this to committee or hold it until the next meeting to allow her uh, the chance to uh, elaborate on it, it's still already in tonight's agenda. It would still be included as part of that. So as a net result, she just has her comment in two different agendas. Attorney Bolton. I think Alderman Lopez is correct in everything he said. Mm -hmm. Alderman Schmidt. Can somebody make a note of that? <laughs> Alderman Schmidt. <laughs> Thank you, Madam President. Um, whenever somebody writes to me, I always write back if they have not included their name and address. I think that that's essential only because in the days before the pandemic, we had people come to speak with us who had to give us their name and their address. Very simply, I don't think we should accept anything that comes to us unless they have identified who they are and where they live. It's, it's just simple rules that we followed since I began. Um, I, I don't care if it gets included this time or not. It's pretty clear that it's hers. She said it to us. Um, I don't have a problem with it, but I, I really think that we should vet the, the emails that come to us. Uh, to be assured that they are from someone in our city. Thank you. All the woman Kelly. All the woman Kelly. Yeah. Can you hear me? I can now. Yes. <laughs> I didn't have my hand up. If that's what you thought. Oh, I thought you did. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. <laughs> All the woman Lou. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, the way it looks to me is that the resident in Nashua who either wrote or saw something that they feel that they would like to come to our meeting and, and read, they feel it's relevant. Um, I don't know that it's, it's germane to our decision, whether it was her idea or someone she knows, um, she submitted it for, she would like to have read it before us. And I think that's all that matters. Alderman Clay. Madam President, I am willing to remove my objection as long as we make note in the record this blog was in fact written by Mrs. Ortolano. Well, it's going to be in the minutes now because you've discussed it. <laughs> Fine by me. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Alderman Dowd. Alderman Dow. Okay, sorry. Um, I assume that there's not a link. That it's it's something that's just written in the letter. Okay, because if there were a link, I would have an objection to it because then we can't control what the link would take public to. I have no problem with accepting the communication as long as it's indicated that the comments are from the sender. Okay, so the motion now, Alderman Jetty. 
Well, in, in, in view of the fact that Alderman Klee has withdrawn her objection, um, uh, if I withdraw my motion, will it not will it not just be accepted and placed on file without objection? No, your motion is still in order because we already didn't accept it. So your motion would be in order. Okay. Motion is to accept the communication, place it on file, and suspend the reading. Will the clerk call the roll? Alderman O'Brien. Yes. Alderman Clee. Yes. Alderwoman Kelly. Yes. Alderman Dowd. Yes. Alderman Karen. Yes. Alderman Clemens. Yes. Alderman Lopez. Yes. Alderman Tenza. Yes. Alderwoman Lou. Yes. Alderman Jetty. Yes. Alderman Schmidt. Yes. Alderman Cleaver. Yes. Alderman Harriet Gathright. Yes. Alderman Wilshire. Yes. You have 14 yeas and zero nays. And that motion carries. Communications requiring final approval. Communication from Tim Cummings, Director of Economic Development, regarding contract award for professional engineering services related to the Nashua Downtown Riverfront Implementation Project to Hainer Swanson, Inc. Alderman Gathright. Madam President. I motion to award the contract for professional engineering services related to the Nashua Downtown Riverfront implementation project to have to Hainer Swanson Inc. in an amount not to exceed 24,000 by roll call. You've heard the motion. Is there discussion on that motion? Thank you, Don. Will the clerk call the roll? Alderman O'Brien. Yes. Alderman Clee. Yes. Alderwoman Kelly. Yes. Alderman Dowd. Yes. Alderman Karen. Yes. Alderman Clemens. Yes. Alderman Lopez. Yes. Alderman Tenza. Yes. Alderwoman Lou. Yes. Alderman Jetty. Yes. Alderman Schmidt. Yes. Alderman Cleaver. Yes. Alderman Harriet Gathright. Yes. Alderman Wilshire. Yes. You have 14 yeas and zero nays. And that motion carries. Communication has been received from Mayor Jim Donches regarding contract for two year external audit contract with Melinda Heath. Alderman Clee. Thank you, Madam President, um, a motion to award the contract for a two year external audit contract with Mellington Heath. Year one cost is 122500 for fiscal year 2020 and $125,000 for fiscal year 2021 by roll call, please. Discussion on that motion. Alderman Clay, Alderwoman Clay, I'm sorry, Alderwoman Lou. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm just uh, uncertain. What is an external audit? It's it's done by an outside firm. In other words, it's not internally doing. Yeah, yeah. So it's an outside firm coming in to do the audit. And is this something that we do every year? Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Any further discussion? Seeing none, would the clerk please take the roll? Alderman O'Brien. Yes. Alderman Clee. Yes. Alderwoman Kelly. Yes. Alderman Dowd. Yes. Alderman Karen. Yes. Alderman Clemens. Yes. Alderman Lopez. 
Yes. Alderman Tenza. Yes. Alderwoman Lou. Yes. Alderman Jetty. Yes. Alderman Schmidt. Yes. Alderman Cleaver. Yes. Alderman Harry Knathright. Yes. Alderman Wilshire. Yes. You have 14 yeas and zero nays. And that motion carries. Petitions. There are none. Nations, appointments, and elections. Electric Aggregation Committee. To the Honorable Board of Aldermen, I have this day appointed Robert Blaisdell, 24 Railroad Square, Nashua, and Lawrence Lutton of 47 Concord Street, Nashua, to the Electric Aggregation Committee for terms to expire May 31st, 2023, and respectfully request that these appointments be confirmed. There being no objection, I'll accept the appointments by the mayor as read and refer them to the Personnel and Administrative Affairs Committee. Reports of committees. There being no objection, I will declare the report of the May 11th, 2020 Human Affairs Committee accepted and placed on file. There being no objection, I will declare the report of the May 13th, 2020 Budget Review Committee accepted and placed on file. There being no objection, I will declare the report of the May 19th, 2020 Budget Review Committee accepted and placed on file. Confirmation of mayor's appointments. There are none. Unfinished business resolutions. Second reading of resolution R2037, authorizing the city of Nashua to enter into a contract with the Sohegan Valley Transportation Collaborative for transit services. Alderwoman Kelly. Uh, yes, I move for final passage of R2037 by roll call. Motion is for final passage of resolution 2037. Is there discussion on that motion? Seeing none, would the clerk call the roll? Alderman O'Brien. Yes. Alderman Clee. Yes. Alderwoman Kelly. Yes. Alderman Dowd. Yes. Alderman Karen. Yes. Alderman Clemens. Yes. Alderman Lopez. Yes. Alderman Tenza. Yes. Alderwoman Lou. Yes. Alderman Jetty. Yes. Alderman Schmidt. Yes. Alderman Cleaver. Yes. Alderman Harriet Gathright. Yes. Alderman Wilshire. Yes. You have 14 yeas and zero nays. And that motion carries resolution 2037 is declared duly adopted. Unfinished business ordinances. There is a tabled ordinance 02017 that was tabled at the full board level on May 21st, 2020. Um, <laughs> did anyone want to take that from the table this evening? Seeing none, new business resolutions. First reading of R2039, authorizing Penichuk Corporation and Penichuk Waterworks Inc. to issue taxable bonds of up to $75 million. Additional sponsors? Alderman O'Brien, Alderman Tenza, Alderman Dowd. Given its first reading, I'll assign that to the Budget Review Committee. First reading of Resolution R2040, authorizing the Mayor and City Treasurer to borrow from the New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services State Revolving Loan Fund an additional amount not to exceed $2,500,000 for pump station upgrades. Additional sponsors? Alderman Gathright, Alderman Tenza, Alderman O'Brien, Alderman Dowd, Alderman Schmidt. Um, Alderman, given its first three, Alderman Dowd, do you have a motion? Yes, I'd like to make a motion to accept the first reading of 020040 by roll call, assign it to the Budget Review Committee and the Board of Public Works, and that a public hearing by the Board of Aldermen be scheduled for Wednesday, June 10th, 2020 at 7 p.m. via WebEx. 
The motion is to accept the first reading and schedule a public hearing. Discussion on that? Seeing none, would the clerk call the roll? Alderman O'Brien. Yes. Alderman Clee. Yes. Alderwoman Kelly. Yes. Alderman Dowd. Yes. Alderman Karen. Yes. Alderman Clemens. Yes. Alderman Lopez. Yes. Alderman Tenza. Yes. Alderwoman Lou. Yes. Alderman Jetty. Yes. Alderman Schmidt. Yes. Alderman Cleaver. Yes. Alderman Harriet Gathright. Yes. Alderman Wilshire. Yes. You are 14 yeas and zero nays. And that motion carries. First reading of resolution R2041, approving the cost items of a collective bargaining agreement between the mayor and the Board of Fire Commissioners of the City of Nashville, New Hampshire, and Local 789, International Association of Firefighters, from July 1, 2019 through June 30th, 2023, and authorizing a related transfer and supplemental appropriation. Additional sponsors? Alderman O'Brien, Alderman Gathright. Do I have a motion, Alderman Tenza? Uh, thank you, Madam President. I'd like to make a motion to accept the first reading of 02041 by roll call, assign it to the Budget Review Committee, and that a public hearing uh, by the Board of Aldermen be scheduled for Wednesday, June 10th, 2020, at 7 p.m. via WebEx. You've heard the motion. Is there discussion on that motion? Would the clerk call the roll. Madam yeah, President, Madam President, before we get there, I think you should inquire of Alderman O'Brien if he really means to be a sponsor of this. Uh, I, I think that might have been inadvertent. You know, there's other people on the board that do have some affiliation with other people that are employed by the city. But the thing is, I thought that I could sponsor something. I cannot vote on it. And I recuse myself to vote, but I could definitely sponsor something. I was under that impression. Or well, can you explain to me the difference between sponsorship and actually voting in favor of something? Attorney Bolton. I, I think Alderman O'Brien, if you have a conflict, uh, you ought to recuse yourself from any involvement in the measure including sponsorship and including voting uh, and advocating for. Well, let's get the record clear so that my constituents that have duly elected me completely understand what the problem is. My son works for the fire department. He is over the age of 18. He is emancipated. He does not live with me. And as we all know, in some families, people get along, some people don't. But in this case, my son has no financial to me until when I die, and I hope he doesn't kill me. But the thing is, uh, I think this has taken great effect to my constituents who do support me and expect me to do the right thing and harboring my ability to vote and speak for my constituents with this. I think it's unduly, particularly with other members with some tie to, uh, you know, different... Uh, functions. I could see it. I always recluse myself. My wife, who was a para that worked for the school de uh, department, much as uh, former president of our board, Brian McCarthy, both of us recluse ourselves because it was a financial impact. But having one son that just has a job, there's no financial ties. And I think the flavor of that ordinance that keeps me from doing this, I am not in favor of. So under protest, I'll take the advice of counsel and I'll recuse myself with deep regret and apologies to my constituents. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, would the clerk please call the roll on the motion to accept the first reading and have a public hearing on June 10th, 2020 at 7 p.m. 
Alderman O'Brien. Alderman Clinton. Well, Alderman O'Brien, I think, has to be closed. On the protest. I'll note that. Thank you. Alderman Clee? Yes. Alderwoman Kelly? Yes. Alderman Dowd? Yes. Alderman Karen? Yes. Alderman Clemens? Yes. Alderman Lopez? Yes. Alderman Tenza? Yes. Alderwoman Lou? Yes. Alderman Jetty? Yes. Alderman Schmidt? Yes. Alderman Cleaver? Yes, and apparently you didn't hear me when I asked to be a sponsor. Oh, I didn't, uh, Alderman Cleaver. Sorry. We well, can wish to be added, please. Thank you. Thank you. He's already on then. Alderman Harriet Gathright? Yes. Alderman Wilshire? Yes. You have 13 yeas and one abstention. And that motion carries. New business ordinances. There being no objection, I'll suspend the rules to allow for the first reading of an ordinance that was received after the agenda was prepared. First reading of ordinance 02019 relative to permits for fireworks displays. Alderman O'Brien, do I have a motion? Yes, I hope I can make it with the word fire in it, but I would like to make a motion to suspend the rules for a second reading of 020-019 by roll call. The motion is to suspend the rules to allow for a second reading. Discussion on that motion? Alderman Clay. Madam President, um, I just want to make sure that I, I have this. This Yes, okay. This is the um, the ordinance relative to um, uh, Bishop Girton um, displaying fireworks during their drive round the celebration of their drive through diploma. Um, so I just for the public, I just wanted to make sure that they understand what that is, what what that is in fact um, doing, and that it's actually a short, um, um, I think it's non-commercial um, type of fireworks, and Atlas will be setting those off for what um, the the fire marshal. Okay. We'll get to that if we can okay. suspend the rules. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I did. I, I forgot. Okay. That's My fine. Apologies. Yes. No, 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 no need to apologize. Anyone else? Motion is to suspend the rules to allow for a second reading. Will the clerk call the roll? Alderman O'Brien. Yes. Alderman Clee. Obviously, yes. <laughs> Alderman Kelly. Yes. Alderman Dowd. Yes. Alderman Karen? Yes. Alderman Clemens? Yes. Alderman Lopez? Yes. Alderman Tenza? Yes. Alderwoman Lou? Yes. Alderman Jetty? Yes. Alderman Schmidt? Yes. Alderman Cleaver? Yes. Alderman Harriet Gathright? Yes. Alderman Wilshire. Yes. You have 14 yeas and zero nays. And that motion carries. Second reading of resol ordinance 2019 relative to permits for fireworks displays. Alderman O'Brien. Thank you. I would like to make a motion for final passage of 0-20-19 by roll call. And if I could speak to my motion. Alderman O'Brien. Thank you. This seems to have been brought forward by the good people of Bishop Burton uh, in order to uh, assist them in celebrating in this terrible times that we're living in with the COVID-19. And that what they were looking for is to be able to enhance uh, the graduation ceremony. Uh, they have class C type of fireworks. They're the ones that uh, people can buy. And as the good citizens of Nashville would know, no one is supposed to light any fireworks off in the city of Nashua, according to the, the fire marshal, and I know you all do it. Uh, but however, <clears throat> you can do it when you are permitted. So this is Bishop Gurdon uh, asking for the permit to display. They said uh, 
would not last longer than eight minutes, which seems to be somewhat adequate. It will be under the supervision of the fire marshal. And uh, I wish we could have done it for uh, our municipal high school students, but unfortunately, with uh, the way things are, that cannot be the best. So I would like to say at this time, although this will affect the Bishop Curtin Cardinals, I do wish the Titans. You cut out, Mike. No, no, no Brian. A time. But uh, we'll go with that. Yes. We couldn't hear you. <laughs> you cut out. Uh, I don't know. Must be the bandwidth of <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I I was approached um, by through um, the fire department um, by Bishop Girton to have a five to eight minute fireworks display done professionally. Um, they're going to set up a drive through type setting in their field house, and each graduate's going to go by car through the field, and they're going to project the, this uh, graduate's picture up on the wall. And then after their ceremony and they get their diplomas, they're just going to have a five to eight minute display of fireworks, which I thought was reasonable. So I, I agreed to, uh, to sponsor this for them. Any other discussion on that? Yes, President Wilshire. Alderman Clemens. Thank you. I actually have a question on this. Um, so the way that the, and correct me if I'm wrong, but the way that the ordinance is written, uh, this would allow for not just Bishop Girton this time, but any organization or anyone to uh, get a permit to display fireworks by the fire marshal. Is that correct? Or would it still have to come to the Board of Aldermen? I would have to defer to Corporation Council. It sets standards for when the fire marshal can grant a permit. So yes, other groups or organizations or entities uh, would be eligible to apply as well. Okay. Uh, thank you. I, I. Yeah. Thank you. I. I think that's. Uh, I think that's reasonable. I think it takes the politics out of it, um, which I. I like. I don't have any objection to BG doing this. Um, I don't have much objection to another organization doing it either, um, particularly because it's going to be under the supervision of the fire department. So um, I think this is just good policy and I and I support it. Alderman Jetty. Uh, yes, thank you, Madam President. The um, you know, the idea, the proposal made by uh, Bishop Girton you know, for a uh, a short, uh, you know, several minute uh, fireworks display, uh, you know, under supervision, et cetera. You know, that all uh, sounds good, and uh, I, I would hate to oppose anything like that. However, the ordinance that has been submitted to us uh, constitutes a complete change in the way you know the city. Uh, deals with fireworks. Right now, under the uh, the ordinances, the fireworks ordinances, um, no fireworks uh, without permits, without a permit is allowed. And no permits will be issued except to the city of Nashua for programs and displays under its control. I, I believe this was you know, something with a long history, it goes back to, um, I think primarily the use of uh, fireworks at Holman Stadium and the, uh, the neighbors in that, in that area objecting to it. Um, uh, and, and, you know, back then it, uh, we, you know, we, we, the Board of Aldermen then uh, set a policy that that uh, you know, fireworks displays would not be allowed except except those done by the city. Right now, no one can get a permit to uh, do a fireworks show uh, other than the city of Nashua. This ordinance 
would allow anyone to apply for a permit from the fire marshal. And the fire marshal uh, uh, the ordinance says, you know, can issue permits as long as the, uh, the you know, the safe, there's proper safety procedures put into effect, uh, that the, uh, whoever's doing it uh, indemnifies the city for any, for any damage and uh, have uh, proper amounts of insurance to, to cover it. Other than that, the, the fire marshal has no discretion as to who uh, he, uh, you know, he, he can't deny any permit in a non-discriminatory way. He can't say, so it would, nothing limits uh, him from, and, and nothing enables him to limit uh, how many fireworks shows there are put on in the city. You know, I hate to use an exaggeration to make the point, but uh, you know the only standards he has are: is it safe? Uh, did, did the applicant uh, sign an indemnity agreement, and did the applicant provide proper insurance? If those conditions are satisfied, I believe, and and I I, I defer to Attorney Bolton on this. But if those conditions are satisfied, I don't think the fire marshal could deny anybody a permit. Uh, and he can't deny it, uh, you know, there's no limit on who can get these permits, how often they can get them. Um, so, we face uh, ourselves, have a completely different look or way we regulate fireworks. Fireworks could be done every night at Holman Stadium. They could be done every night, any place where it can be done safely. So, uh, you know, I hate to rain on Bishop Girton's parade, but um, you know, the, this this ordinance doesn't you know doesn't say that the the show that the uh, the display that Bishop Girton wants to do is limited as that is. This ordinance doesn't say that um, that it's limited in any way. Uh, you know, it would it would permit the Bishop Girton show. It would also permit a whole bunch of other displays, fireworks displays from being used. So I, I think, you know, this, this is one of the problems I think we run into when things are presented to us at the last minute and an and, and ordinance is, uh, is drafted very quickly, presented to us without a proper uh, discussion and vetting by a committee. Um, I just think this is bad legislation. I, I, I think it sets a bad precedent uh, for for the city. And uh, you know, as much as I'd like to, to allow Burton to do what they want to do on on uh, for their graduation, I cannot support this ordinance. Alderman Clee. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I, I I have to somewhat agree with um, Alderman Jetty. I, I do feel uncomfortable that we're um, setting this up, uh, that it could become a display that um, would not be able to be denied. Um, the truth is that I get many constituents that contact me, um, even from this weekend, fireworks were going off throughout the city. Um, they don't wanna call the police to ask them to come chasing them down because they know, especially nowadays there's so much going on and they don't wanna put anybody in harm's way. But year after year, we have um, personal homes setting off fireworks. Now, if it's suddenly that different organizations are gonna be able to do this, I have no problem with Bishop Burton. I have no problem with this one time thing. If it were able that we did an ordinance that allowed this one time, um, I would not, not have that issue. But to give a carte blanche and to say that any time for any reason, as long as it meets the, the criteria that um, Alderman Jetty outlined, um, I do have an issue with it. I want Bishop Girton to be able to do this I just don't want to give that much power. Um, I'm sorry, I do have that issue. Thank you. Okay. Alderman Lou, did you have your hand up? I have mine up as well. I see you, Tom. I, okay, I do too. Okay. Thank well, you. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, I, I simply wanted to offer to my um, the Ward 6, uh, uh, 
I actually thought that um, this was being held last weekend, and um, I, if I had known that it was, you know, I had time to go out and speak with people, I would have definitely, you know, um, um, uh, slapped the bushes, what's the phrase, but it got some feedback and, and reached out to people um, because my concern with this, the broadness of the ordinance is that um, we have all kinds of neighborhoods that could be subjected to, you know, just unforeseen uh, noise. And um, I don't see that the time duration, the duration of the, this was, um, you know, a limitation in the ordinance. Um, I know it, my understanding is that's what Bishop Burton wants in, in this particular instance, but um you know what if they were longer um so i just wanted to uh, just to speak a apology to ward six um then i did reach out to discuss this with them thank you alderman lopez so i really like the intent behind this in terms of bishop Gurton. i think this is a very difficult time for children who are graduating and that they deserve something special to recognize their accomplishments to Gives them that sense of community that they get from graduating and that, that transition from you know this <laughs> to you're you're graduated you've accomplished something and the community recognizes so i am in favor of letting um bishop girton uh launch their firework uh exchange but like the alderman who spoke before me i don't see that it was a good idea to lump that one time situation which i think should be special it should be unique and you know it should be Bishop Gurton's idea and their effort um, into a broader change in ordinance that we can't fully vet because we need to do this in a timely manner so that Bishop Gurton can enact it. But at the same time, we have smuggled a citywide change in. So my question to Attorney Bolton is: if We had if we amend this uh, this uh, ordinance to be specific to the problem before us, which is um, uh, Bishop Gurton. Alderman Lopez, can, can I interrupt you for a second? Whoever just joined the meeting, can you please mute yourself? Thank you. Sorry, Alderman Lopez. That's okay. If we do, if we amended this so that it's specific to Bishop Gurton, do we have to reintroduce the legislation completely in order to get it to a committee? Or does somehow passing that restrict what we can propose to the Board of Aldermen? I don't think that's the problem. I think the problem is that if you pass legislation that allows a Roman Catholic organization to do something while keeping in place a restriction against any other religion doing that or any other ethnic group or civil civic organization or social club or for-profit organization, I think you run into a serious discrimination on the basis of suspect class. That makes sense. So in your opinion, if we if we amended the ordinance to make each application subject to aldermanic approval for now, and then maybe went back at this at a separate time and said, let's appoint a specific committee like the special events committee to vet these and approve them with an aldermanic liaison. That still leaves a mechanism for neighborhood concerns to be brought in, but at the same time, it, it lets us get this done so that Bishop Gurton can have their graduation. I think neutral standards are probably the way to go. So if you wanted to limit the length, the temporal length of the display to 10 minutes or 12 minutes. Uh, I think something like that would be appropriate. I think if you wanted to say any entity could obtain permits for no more than one display per year or two displays per year, I think those sorts of facially neutral restrictions would be appropriate. Uh, requiring organizations to come before a 
political body, one at a time, I, I think that's problematic. Okay, then my last question is, is there st there's still the opportunity because we're the ones creating this ordinance to amend this later on to add those stipulations that you suggested, right? You could introduce uh, another ordinance at your next meeting to uh, add restrictions, uh, relax restrictions, uh, provide more standards, different standards, alter the insurance requirements, uh, provide more guidance to the fire marshal. Any of those things can be done this evening at your next meeting or any future meeting. So, I mean, Ms. Madam President, this is my last comment. I think okay. um, my priority personally is to make sure that we don't interrupt a, a graduating class that has already had a pretty hand, bad hand dealt to them. But I'm also extremely aware of how this could potentially impact the tree streets if, say, every nightclub or every you know casino mm -hmm. or whatever uh, could, could launch fireworks. You have several places downtown that are safe, but they're also kind of a nuisance for neighbors. So I do share Alderman Jetty's concerns that this is being pushed through in a way that is not timely. But now I understand that it's because we're trying to avoid any preferential treatment. So I would just suggest to the board that we continue forward with this legislation and then introduce additional amendments that we can vet very thoroughly in a committee setting. All set, Alderman Lopez? Yep, thank you. You're welcome, Alderman Karen. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, one of my concerns um, that I mentioned this morning when I saw this was the fact that uh, the residents live so close to that baseball field. And as Alderman Lou said, uh, she probably would have had time to knock on doors or try to find out, do we have any sense of how the neighbors feel? Um, my other concern is the same with Alderman Jetty. I mean, I have been involved with fireworks for an awful long time, and I know the problems and situations we have gone through, and that's why that ordinance was put in, that fireworks would be performed by the city. And as you know, 4th of July is going to be here before we know it. And once this is passed, you're going to see a lot of people come out looking for permits uh, for that time period. And I'm just not sure this is what we should be doing at, as a last resort. Um, I appreciate BG's idea, but maybe if they had known about this a little bit er earlier, we could have vetted this a little bit more. But I really do have some concerns um, as Corporation Council about all of these people who are gonna come out and be looking to shoot fireworks. And I know I get plenty of calls, especially on 4th of July, of close quarters of people shooting fireworks. So uh, I really am not, in, I, I appreciate what they're trying to do, but I really am hesitating uh, approving this. Thank you. Alderman Dowd. Uh, yes, a um, couple things. One, uh, I've worked with a fire marshal on a number of occasions. And trust me when I say that they will ensure any time that they grant a permit for fireworks, that all the safety measures will have to be met, including space, distance, uh, type of fireworks, having a truck standing by, and all of that. Also, they probably could have just gone out and bought fireworks and in this kind of display and lit them off because they're the class C, they're the ones you can buy up on Amherst Street if you want to go buy them. But they wanted to do it right and they wanted to have the fire marshal there and the fire department there and make sure everything was done safely. Uh, I would like to see us let them have this, this occasion and if we want to bring it back into a committee and discuss it further and put more T's and C's in it, uh, we can do that. But again, um, I think if if uh, if tomorrow uh, they decided to do a graduation at, at Home Stadium for Nashville High, which I don't think they can do because it's still a larger class, 
you know, eight minute display or six minute display is pretty short. And I can tell you on the 4th of July, I've seen displays going off at Charlotte Avenue School that are probably 45 minutes to an hour with no permit. So um, I, I think we would be, you know, let's give these kids something. Alderman Clay and Alderman O'Brien. Thank you, um, um, Madam President. Um, I, I have to say, I, I do have a concern that we're opening up uh, Pandora's box. Um, and I know for a fact that uh, many people are constantly wanting to celebrate this and celebrating that. And, um, and while I don't blame them, currently they do it without fire marshal approval. I hear them going off constantly. I, I see them on the civic sounding board. I just don't want to open it up that if we said yes, to this one or the fire marshals that gets this one, there is no saying no, because we look into, okay, well, you said it as, as uh, attorney Bolton said, you said it for this Catholic organization. Why aren't you saying it for this Muslim group or, um, you know, this, um, these other groups and so on. So I, I just, while I want them to have this special celebration, I'm not feeling comfortable. I feel like we're just opening up a Pandora's box and I don't want to go there. Alderman O'Brien and then Alderman Tenza. Uh, President, well. If I cut out, I don't know what's wrong with the bandwidth, but I had trouble with the, I had to re-sign on. But uh, as most of you know, I've had a lot of experience with this particular subject matter. Uh, I don't know if many of you know it, but many of our city, citizens enjoy a campfire in the backyard. In order to have that campfire, whether you're Catholic, Protestant, Muslim, or whatever, you have to petition to have a permit. And it's by state guidelines. Uh, it seems the state has directed the state fire marshal, and the state has appointed all the lieutenants and captains and deputy chiefs as fire wardens, and they're able to go out and give the permit. Now, they got to physically come out and look at the facility that is going to have that particular farm fire to make sure that certain criteria, such as the supplier, has to be 25 feet away from any one structure and everything else. And I feel comfortable with this because I fully entrust the, the fire marshal, if they want to do this, that if they want to come up, if somebody's coming up and getting a permit, that's a great cry and it's a far cry from somebody doing it illegally. And there's a lot of illegal activity, and that's where we get into trouble. That's where we had the fire on Burnham Street that had four buildings going and four alarms several years ago by children playing with fireworks illegally. But in this type of situation, if the person gets the permit, that means the fire marshal has the right to establish a certain amount of criteria that needs to be followed in order for them to have this particular display. And that goes across the board to many different groups or social groups. Uh, some permits may be denied because of a close proximity to uh, other structures, combustible structures and everything, such as less than 25 feet away from uh, uh, combustibles when you have a, a fire uh, pit. The other good thing with the permit is you're asking perm uh, permission to have the fire. So therefore, as the same rules with uh, a fire permit, if a neighbor calls up and complains that the smoke and everything from the fire uh, permit uh, is a nuisance, then the engine company goes out and terminates the permit. And if this is a case where neighbors call up, they're able to, uh, I'm sure the call will go back to the fire marshals, to which they'll probably immediately cease the display from it to be done. So it seems with a permit, seems better than somebody going out and doing it if the fire marshals want to take that type of responsibility, I fully entrust them with the uh, safety of the city, and I feel that they are capable of doing that. It would be a lot of work, I understand, but uh, it's one of those things that they are capable of doing if they so wish, and I feel a lot comfortable if it's permitted. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman O'Brien. Alderman Tenza. Thank you, Madam President. Just to... Um... Bring up one thing that Alderman Jetty said about the fire marshal 
uh, you know, having just saying that it's safe and, and that is, you know, that that would be enough. Um, I, I would just have to disagree with that. I think there's a state law on what is safe and what people are able to do as far as fireworks are concerned, uh, especially in a private display. Um, the state fire marshal's office also has regulations that uh, the city fire marshal would uh, abide by. So um, it wouldn't be left up to the opinion uh, of the city's fire marshal. It, it would be um, in guidance of, according to the regulations of, of state law. Um, and then, you know, a lot of the issues that people are talking about, I think Alderman O'Brien just, just hit, uh, hit on this, but, um, you know, the people who are um, lighting off fireworks in, in our neighborhoods are not going to get a permit. They're not going to go through the insurance requirements. But um, if there are other groups that may this 4th of July, um, you know, private groups or public groups uh, be able to get a uh, safe display together for, for their group. Um, and able to go through the permitting process, uh, I think it may be uh, a good thing, even though it is, uh, as uh, someone said, 4th of July will be here before we know it. So um, I think we may be overthinking this a little bit too much. Um, it seems like people want uh, Bishop Gurton to be able to do this. So hopefully uh, we can pass this tonight for them, because if not, um, they'll lose that opportunity. Alderman, President Wilshire. Alderman Clemens. Thank you. Uh, I have a I have a question through you to Corporation Council. Sure. Um, would it be possible uh, under your do you think that it would be overly discriminating if the city were to put a limit on how many entities uh, could apply? So, in other words, the city let's say the city set a limit of 10 permits and it was first come first serve. There's nothing on the face of that that's discriminatory. Um, if it turns out that, you know, every, every year, uh, you know, 10 Irish groups, uh, you know, apply for St. Patrick's Day, and and that that ends up with uh, those are all the permits, folks. And when Bastille Day comes along, the Lafayette Club is uh, has been elbowed out. I think that becomes a problem. So maybe you want to do some kind of rotating system or something like that, so it's not the uh, the same group every year uh, so it becomes an you know how does it work in actuality as opposed to um, on the face of it but if you want to say that there'll be 10 permits and in and of itself i don't think that's wrong but we'll have to monitor it uh, as experience shows okay um, my, I guess just listening to the conversation, my concern is that, um, you know, some people have, uh, have a concern that I think is legitimate that, you, you know, we don't want too many groups rushing to, to do this, um, all the time. I, I don't have a problem with fireworks in general. Um, you know, I think, I think the city of Nashua does a good job regulating them as far as, uh, the legal ones go. Um, so when a group, if a group were to come forward and they were to go through this process, I have all the confidence in the world that the fire department would, you know, put on a safe display and everything like that. I, I don't have any, um, concerns about that i think and i and i would hope that most of my colleagues would agree i think what the what the issue seems to be is is the amount of fireworks that could possibly happen um or the length of time and and things like that so um with all of that said i am going to support this um ordinance as it's written tonight 
so that we can get um, so we can have VG uh, do their graduation with the fireworks. Um, and I'm going to hope that we don't get a lot of applications between now and um, the end, the next time we can bring legislation forward. And then hopefully we can come to some sort of compromise because I think, I think it's a good idea to allow some limited gr a number of groups uh, to do these types of displays. Not all the time, but I think if, if you know, I, I don't see personally anything wrong with a fireworks display here and there after a home stadium baseball game, um, you know, stuff like that. Uh, if there's a big celebration and and there's room to do something, I, I think we should allow or try to allow groups to do this. Um, but I, I certainly understand the hesitation that we don't want to open up the floodgates either. Uh, so for now, I'm going to go with um, supporting this and, you know, basically echo what Alderman uh, Lopez had said, which is let's get let's uh, do this tonight and then we'll get some legislation later to, to tighten it up. Thank you. Thank you. Um, without objection, I understand that Chief Rhodes has joined us and would like to uh, weigh in on the conversation. Chief Rhodes. Good evening and thank you, Madam President. Can you hear thank me? You. Uh, yes. Uh, um, this is not something that fire department takes lightly. Um, our fire marshal has surveyed the site at Bishop Curtin. Um, it falls within the parameters of the state as well as city ordinances for a safety zone. Um, I cannot speak to the uh, notification of abutters, but I can speak to the safety of the site. Um, there are very, very few sites uh, in the city of Nashua that have the square footage that would accommodate um, a class C or a consumer, uh, I, I forget the exact term, a consumer grade or uh, what, whatever it's called, uh, type fireworks. But I also believe there are very few entities in the city of Nashua who could meet the, re the insurance requirements um, to hold an event like this. We are, we are comfortable um, with this from a public safety standpoint, because we do have the area safely discharge those. We will, as we do with events at Holman Stadium, we will have a fire department presence on scene. Our fire marshal will be on scene and will inspect the setup. Um, and just to reiterate, this is not something that the average citizen would request and meet all of the requirements um, to do this. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. I have Alderman Lopez. No, you don't. I never said anything. Oh, you're all set, Alderman Lopez. I'm, I'll cross you off. Alderman, Alderman Lou. Thank you very much, Madam Chairman. Um, uh, beside the safety, I mean, we have a lot of experts right here on the board that can speak to uh, many years of experience on the safety that can be ensured. But we have to consider the nuisance of the noise to neighbors. This is a brand new initiative. I could always be certain that I wouldn't have. Um, fireworks in my backyard and um, and there are people who are very sensitive to to these kind of noises um, and there are there are children and there are animals um, and so I understand what um, Chief Rhodes his point is well taken actually 
if it would be a very infrequent occurrence, that would be great. Um, but if not, then how would anyone know whether the noise they're hearing down the street is a, um, a permitted firework or a non-permitted firework? And how would we keep, how would a, an ordinary resident be able to protect themselves against the nuisance of noise and um, when they don't know what permits have been issued and it just seems to get confusing. Thank you. Alderman Clay. Thank you, um, Madam President. Uh, one other comment I guess you question and if um, Chief Rhodes is still there, perhaps he can answer. These will always be just this class C, the, um, they're not the, they will never be the big ones that we see at home in stadiums, correct? Chief? Um, I believe that even the fireworks we see at home and stadium are, are classified as class C. Okay. Or consum consumer grade. I, I guess my, my concern um, is a little bit of the nuisance. Um, I, I'm not quite sure how I'll vote. I'll know in a few seconds, but um, the, I, I, have to, I have to be very, very specific here that the calls that I get from my, from the illegal ones, and I know they're illegal ones, um, which are quite um, loud. Um, I've had them set right off at the end of my driveway um, from neighbors and so on is what it does to our PTSD veterans, what it does to um, just neighbors in general, what it does to children, what it does to animals. Um, I do respect the fact that um, Chief Road said that it's probably not gonna be as widespread as we think it, it's going to be. Um, and I did feel much more comfortable with that, which is which now I'm kind of going towards the other way, but I, I do have to say that I, I am worried um, about what this will do to the, the current ordinance we have a hard enough time telling people, no, you can't do it, it's illegal. They don't believe you. No matter how much you show the ordinance, they're gonna do it anyway. So, um, but I I've said enough, thank you. Alderman Gathright. Hi, um, thank you, Madam President. Um, I'm gonna vote for this and I'm really excited and happy that Chief was able to get on the phone to give us some clarity as to the process and all that the prior person goes through to okay something like this. Um, I do believe that it does need to come back to committee, but I am willing to vote for the school to have um, the fireworks on the 31st. I think it was the 31st. And, um, but I would like to see it come back if people wanted to do some more betting about, you know, fireworks going forward. Alderman Gethrick, it is May 31st with a rain date of June 1st, just so you're aware. Okay. Alderman Thank Kelly, you. Alderman Kelly. I always keep surprising me and I'm on mute, sorry. <laughs> um, I was trying to find our 4th of July ordinance while everyone was speaking. I'm just wondering why um, it, it's not specific to the day like the 4th of July one is that we have to do every year. I'm not sure what your question is. I, Everybody says what? Um, each year we have to approve the 4th of July fireworks, correct? Yes. And it's specific to the date. Is there any reason why this legislation was not drafted the same way? It would just be the one time. I would have to defer to Corporation Council. I don't see where it says in the existing ordinance that uh, the Board of Aldermen approves it every year. Uh, I I basically wrote an amendment to the existing one. Okay. So we, we, what we approve is the funding. Okay. Yeah. I guess I'm also referencing other times when we've waived the ability to do it after 10 p.m., et cetera. So that's why I'm just wondering why this is different than other times when we've made a one-time allowance. Yeah, I, I don't know. Alderman Clay. In reference to Alderwoman Kelly's um, comment, I think in the past what we voted on is the time going beyond that um, 10 o'clock time zone because there's been a game or something like that that could extend it. 
Um, and that's why we've had to, I think that's why we've had to do it. And this, in the past, it's always been the city that's putting it on. It's not a private entity and a private organization. Um, so I think that's why we've had, we voted on it for the cost and the time to, to suspend the time. Um, and we've done a public hearing, I think, and so on in some cases, but I believe that's what it was, so. Anyone else? Uh, President Wilshire? Yes, Alderman Karen. Yes, thank you. Um, in thinking what Alder woman Kelly has just said, um, through you to Corporation Council, why can't we make this uh, amendment for a one time only so that BG can do this and then wait and send this ordinance back to committee so that they can look at it and really put some uh, good wording in there for future requests that come down the line. At least we will have taken care of BG for the moment but it's gone and then we can work on it for later. I just think we're going to get overwhelmed with requests and I appreciate uh, Chief Rhodes' comments because I know how they do their due diligence with fireworks, but you also have those people as Alderman Clee mentioned that do things even though they're not supposed to. So that's my question, if we could, just say this is for BG one time and then go forward, I would not have a problem voting for it. Thank you. Attorney Bolton. You can do that if you want. I will tell you that I would be very concerned if another religious organization came before you and you turned them down. I would be very concerned. Okay. Anyone else? Alderman Jetty. So, uh, following up on that, uh, Madam President, could I also ask Attorney Bolton if uh, if what's before us tonight were limited in time to, for example, June second, uh, would would that uh, would that also would that uh, would he be concerned about that uh, violating the uh, non-discriminatory uh, portion of the uh, constitution that he's worried about? Attorney Bolton, I don't think you would be fooling the American Civil Liberties Union or a federal district court judge at all. Uh, it's not so much this time; it's what happens next time when a Jewish organization is turned down or a Hindu organization is turned down or a Muslim organization is turned down. That's what I'd be worried about. And I don't think some kind of uh, short window just to allow Bishop Gurton to do it is going to fool any. Okay, That's if right. I could follow up. Um, Alderman Jetty. Yeah, I've never, um, I've never had any good experience uh, fooling a federal judge, um, uh, so, and I don't want to try now. Uh, <laughs> I, I I just want to you know, you know answer some of the things you know some of my fellow aldermen may have misunderstood what you know, what I was saying about the uh, the fire marshal um, uh, not having the discretion to turn anyone down. Other than you know, if um, if he feels that uh, you know what what they're proposing is unsafe, I, I understand the fire department. You know, Chief Rhodes. Uh, you know, I understand how seriously they take um, you know, safety, and uh, that's not uh, that's not the issue. And and uh, you know, the issue is uh, that um, you know, generally speaking, this ordinance. Uh, you know, the issue is that people, I think, a lot of people don't like the noise. It's the noise that, that is the problem. I'm sure that the fire marshal will make sure that you know, any display is uh, complies with all of the safety rules. Um, 
it's it's the it's the noise that uh, that irritates people. Um, and when Chief Rhodes talked about how this would be limited because organizations cannot afford the insurance. I want to point out to him that the insurance policy that's being provided in this instance is being provided by the fireworks company, not Bishop Girton. It's the fireworks company that is uh, that has submitted the certificate of insurance to cover the insurance. And that fireworks company, uh, you know, they have insurance in place, and they will they would be able to issue that same certificate of insurance. Uh, is for as many organizations that are that are willing to pay them to put on a fireworks display. Um, you know, I just think that you know the problem with this is that there is there are a lot of uh, you know questions. You know, I, I like the idea of uh, you know some of my fellow aldermen talked about you know let's you know bring this back to committee and and fully vet it. Uh, but we'll allow it to go ahead to to allow Bishop Girton. Um, you know, I'm I'm just uh, you know that doesn't take into account the fact that citizens uh, in in that neighborhood that surround Bishop Girton, um, you know, have we don't know. I'm I, you know, hopefully they're all looking forward to this show if if they know about it. They probably don't know anything about it. We didn't know about this until this afternoon, so I doubt that uh, the people in that neighborhood. Uh, you know, I, I would I would love to to learn that Bishop Girton itself went around and talked to the neighbors and, and told them about their plans and asked them what their what their reaction was. I would love to hear that, um, but you know, right now I don't. I don't know that. I don't know how the neighbors feel about this, and um, you know, I just think it's a a bad uh, precedent, which just flies in the face of uh, of a number of years of uh, policy that we've had in Nashua about fireworks displays and fireworks shows. And so, uh, you know, I, I I still can't vote for it. Thank you, Alderman Lopez. Um, well, just in respect to the comments just made, I think it would be since we're the ones granting a permit in theory here, um, it would probably be appropriate for the city to alert using the emergency alert system or some kind of mechanism um, to inform residents that this is going on because that is, I mean, you don't want to startle them, but um, it's also an eight minute show. So I think if people had a little bit of warning, they could probably endure it. Um, I had a question to attorney Bolton, which it'd be an easy way out if it's true. Do you happen to know if um, if Bishop Girton is a five hundred one c three? I don't know that. I I think they're probably exempt from taxes under other provisions of the law, but I I have no know. I I just had the idea that maybe we could limit this to five hundred one c threes. That way we sidestep the whole religious organization uh, angle, but. In, in a practical sense, trying to find out if they're a 501c3 or if we authorize this just for 501c3 to find a partner, doing all that in a week is not likely to happen. So, just an idea. You all said Alderman Lopez? Yep. Alderman Clay. Thank you again, Madam President. Um, I, I've been sitting here thinking, going back and forth, and saying I trust our fire department and so on. Um, I'm just, I have anxiety about opening a Pandora's box. I, I think I have to vote no against this. Um, um, and and in, in deference to um, Alderman Lou, Alderwoman Lou and her, her constituents there, I know what it's like to live with home and stadium in your backyard and the fireworks display and so on and what it does to some of the neighbors. Um, my fear is that someone would say, we want to do a fireworks display and can we have it at home and stadium? Um, you know, that's enough, a big enough place. We always do it there and so on. Um, I, I, I really do. I have anxiety that this is going to end up literally in my backyard and, um, I, I can't see it. I feel horrible because I want these kids to have a wonderful, special, um, they are a truly, truly a special group of, uh, 
of graduates, but I just can't do it. I can't open up that Pandora box. And I know Ward 3 will suffer for it because I know it will happen in Holman Stadium. I just know it. So I can't vote for this. Thank you. Anyone else? President Wilshire. Alderman Clemens. Yes, President Wilshire. Yes. Thank you. I, uh, I too am a resident of Ward 6 and I live right down the street from BG. I drive by every day. I saw them kind of setting up uh, this afternoon. Um, yeah, my my only I think what uh, Alderman Lopez said about maybe using the uh, um, emergency management uh, system to call people or you know just somehow getting in touch um, with the neighborhood I think would be a good idea. But you know, as a neighbor, I'm kind of excited for it. Um, I might I might even go down and watch the show myself if if we do allow this. Um, so just just one Ward Six constituent uh, perspective. Thank you. Anyone else? Alderman Clay. I guess I have two comments over what was just recently said. Um, one is um, the fact of that if we do send an emergency um, call out there, it's still after the fact. We're telling them to prepare themselves for it, for this thing to happen. Um, and that's one thing. And just what Alderman um, Clements just said, I may go out there and watch it myself which means we could end up with a crowd. So just putting it out there again. Thank you. Alderwoman Kelly. Thank you. Uh, and I appreciate the, the lively debate on this. Uh, I currently am struggling with supporting this and right now in its current state, I don't feel um, okay supporting it. I don't wanna be punitive to the students. I know it's been a rough number of months for a lot of people but i want to make sure that if we're making sweeping changes to legislation that it is being vetted and is being vetted properly through the committee process i think there's a difference between suspending the rules to get aid quickly to people um, and suspending the rules in this case um, to open up as it's been said a pandora's box um, in the in the in the city going forward so I will not be supporting it in this current state, but I am open to suggestions from other elders. Anyone else? This is Alderman President Cleaver. Alderman Cleaver? Yes, I, I'm very much in favor of this. I would like to see it pass so they can go forward with their uh, celebrations. I agree that it needs a lot of work and I would like to bring it back just as soon as possible to, to uh, address all the fears and concerns that have been addressed here tonight. But I think the first and foremost responsibility is for us to get these kids a graduation and celebration worthy of their efforts. And I would like to just pass it on and then deal with it later. Sorry to interrupt, but we have lost the bridge. Just give me a minute. Hello. We're on. We're uh, recess for a minute till they fix the bridge.
the the motion is to uh, move the question. Will the clerk call the roll. Alderman O'Brien. Yes. Alderman Clee. Yes. Alderwoman Kelly. Yes. Alderman Dowd. Yes. Alderman Karen. No. Alderman Clemens. Yes. Alderman Lopez. Yes. Alderman Tenza. Yes. Alderwoman Lou. No. Alderman Jetty. No. Alderman Schmidt. Yes. Alderman Cleaver. Yes. Alderman Harriet Gathright. Yes. Alderman Wilshire. Yes. We have 11 okay. yeas, three nays. And that motion carries. Madam Clerk, are we at motion for final passage? Yes. Okay, the motion before us is for final passage of, res of ordinance 2019 by roll call. Would the clerk call the roll? Alderman O'Brien. Yes. Alderman Clee. No. Alderwoman Kelly. No. Alderman Dowd. Yes. Alderman Karen. No. Alderman Clemens. Yes. Alderman Lopez. Yes. Alderman Tenza. Yes. Alderwoman Lou. No. Alderman Jetty. No. Alderman Schmidt. Yes. Alderman Cleaver. Yes. Alderman Harriet Gathright. Yes. Alderman Wilshire. Yes. You have nine yeas and five nays. And that motion carries. Ordinance 20 19 is duly adopted. Uh, remarks by members of the board. Alderman O'Brien. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Um, I'm going to ask the intelligence of the board. I was going to apologize for my little outburst earlier, but I am not. And the reason is because those of you who are state representatives know the conflict of interest is a lot different, a lot lighter and what exists on this floor. I feel that this is highly prejudicial. I wonder if my son was a priest, could I have voted on this last ordinance because it had to do with the Catholic organization? <laughs> Point is this, I did not see my son reappear. I am capable, I am responsible for the voters who duly elected me. And if I do vote wrongly, I think the voters will have their say at the polls if they feel that there is that I am, you know, showing any type of conflict. So I am not going to really apologize. It. I'm going to fight it. I will look to prepare an ordinance to this, following more what is in following on the state guidelines that many of you who are former representatives who are currently state representatives currently fall in the state. I think we're all mature. I looked at some members of the board, some of you came from other boards, such as school departments, but you show no prejudice. But this ordinance, excuse me, this uh, thing where I can't have to recruit myself, I think is highly prejudiced to me, and to the voters who did duly elected me. I'm a fair guy, I think I could do it right. And in all fairness, I think with the fire department, yeah, that is my experience. I spent 10 years as a firefighter, 10 years as a line officer, and 15 years as a deputy fire chief. So 35 years. I paid my dues, and I think I know what's good and what's bad within the fire department. But this is limiting my ability to vote for it. And also, too, in the mayor's remarks, I did note 
And I think the mayor, probably without any malice, and I'm sure it was without any malice, but he said 17% at 4% for four years. But from what I understand, and from my education and my experience on the fire department, I think it's actually, and correct me if I'm wrong, 3.5% at 14%. I don't think I would have supported a 17% raise, but the 14% seems to be accurate. And if the mayor didn't misspoke, then we'll do that. So, uh, Attorney Bolton, I'm looking to perhaps maybe working with you in the future to change this inequity that is prejudicial to uh, anybody in the future that you come. Just because what my son chose to do for a career that I cannot vote, I find it highly prejudicial. And I'm looking to change that. And then also, too, while I got the floor, while we're changing some other really neat I think, ideas that happened in the past, I'm really looking forward to working with Alderman Ben Clemens, if he so wishes. we got to fix this umbrella thing down on Main Street. I don't know who surprised when you walk by Peddler's Daughter that you're going to see a Guinness umbrella. Okay. And I think that could be done. I mean, I think anybody knows that they're walking by a bar room. I don't think the umbrella's really got to really cut the mustard there. So I think we really need to look at that. And so I thank you for your time and listening to my little diet class. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman O'Brien. Alderman Tenza. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Um, I just wanted to mention, as we know, uh, yesterday we celebrated Memorial Day. Um, it's a day when we recognize and, and remember all the service members we've lost uh, in, in service to our country. Um, in the past, uh, the Nashua Elks have uh, displayed flags on the uh, as a memorial uh, in all the city cemeteries uh, for the veterans who are there. Unfortunately, this year, because of the COVID-19, they were not able to do that, but I just wanted to recognize and thank a group uh, that was headed by uh, Jackie Leonardi here in town uh, and the Cub Scouts and Boy Scouts that she works with uh, in both fundraising to uh, supply the flags and, and distributing them uh, yesterday or over the last weekend uh, so that that service could still be um, still be available uh, to all of the veterans and uh, service members that have been lost. Uh, also just wanted to say uh, for the families in town who have lost a service member, um, thank you for your, for your sacrifice. Uh, and uh, as we start this uh, unusual summer, um, you know, we'll, we'll remember them uh, and all of the uh, things we can be thankful for uh, individually uh, as we move forward. Thanks. You're welcome. Alderman Dowd. Yes, yeah, just a couple quick things. Um, Sunday, I was curious. I just took a ride downtown to see how the new setup was looking, and uh, all of the restaurants, large and small, were fully seated at all their tables. All the servers were wearing masks, and people were having a great time. I'm glad to see that the businesses downtown now can recover some of the lost revenue. It may take a long time, but uh, it looked like people were following the guidelines and enjoying themselves. Also, relative to uh, the fireworks thing ending up in Holman Stadium, if anybody wanted to use Holman Stadium, they'd have to pay for the rent, they'd have to pay the police, and they'd have to pay the firemen. So uh, I don't think that will be too often and the other thing is uh, we have the public hearing on June, we have two public hearings on June 10th with the two ordinances uh, and one of them is the fireman's contract. We will have the uh, public hearing and then go directly into the budget meeting afterwards and take up those two pieces of legislation. And also on June 2nd, uh, we will have our first wrap up session on the budget. And if we don't get anywhere, uh, the next one will be the fourth. And then we have, I believe, another one the following week. Uh, so uh, hopefully we could do it in one night, but we'll see where we're at. Thank you. 
Alderman Clay. Thank you, Madam uh, President. Um, I, I wanted to also comment about the um, umbrella. Over the weekend, I was bothering Attorney Bolton <laughs> with my emails asking him um, why we we couldn't do this and 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 so on. Um, so I hope we can work towards that. If there's an ordinance, I'm more than happy to to co-sponsor um, that. I drove through uh, Manchester on Monday, and every single place that was open had, a, you know, the umbrellas with different type of uh, liquors and and uh, beers and Guinness et cetera on it. So um, I didn't think it was this detracting and under the circumstances to help support these uh, businesses at $100 an umbrella and they can be donated. I think it's the right thing. I also did want to talk about Main Street. Um, I've been working with United Way in um, uh, giving out masks. Um, they've been doing City Hall up until today. Today they started City Hall and Railroad Square and they'll be there to the 31st, 10 to 2 every single day. Um, I gave a record um, 1,250 masks away on Friday, and today 786 at Railroad Square. Um, the majority of people were grateful to get these masks, and it's for anybody within your family. So please go to right in front of City Hall or Railroad Square. And um, I was there watching all of the things happening on Friday with them putting in um, the barriers and so on, and there was a little bit of chaos. And I have noticed some chaos on Water Street. That's about the only thing I can say. And I know that they are working on it and they're going to be moving some of those barriers on Water Street, um, at the Water Street Main Street um, exit. But it was a beautiful sight to see and literally warmed my heart. So I hope people go down and uh, celebrate with social distancing um, and masks on Main Street. Thank you. Alderman Gathright. Um, there's a family, um, I think it is in um, uh, Alderman Jetty's location, Smoky Lane, I believe that's his area. Um, the McCullum family, um, Amina, she lost her husband um, at St. Joe's. He has been there for about a month and he finally passed away on Sunday. So um, my heart goes out to the family. They've been residents of Nashua for about 40 years and um, have one adult son that lives in Manchester. So. Or his name was Roy McCullen. And that's about it. Thank you. You're welcome. All the, all the women, Kelly. I'm here. Sorry. <laughs> um, I wanted to uh, talk about a couple of things. So if you have not seen, the Pride Committee has decided to go forward with a virtual Pride. Uh, we have been working diligently as a committee to come up with what the plan would be in COVID-19 era. And we decided that it was important to still celebrate our LGBTQ community. Um, and so that will be happening June 27th from two to four. It'll be a live stream of the drag show um, as well as other things. So you can go to the website and check it out. Hope you'll, hopefully we'll get a good group of people hopping on and enjoying that day. It'll be a little different than the last couple of years, uh, but I think uh, it'll still be a lot of fun. I also wanted to talk about downtown. I wanted to thank DPW for how quickly uh, they acted. I know it, this has been a labor of love, everyone coming up with creative ways of going about it and how quickly we were able to implement it. I think I've seen a number of comments and, and articles talking about how we are sort of the you know the baseline that the people are looking to us because we did that so quickly and we are supporting our downtown businesses so i thank people very much for that uh, i was also contacted about the umbrellas i'm willing to support and vet the move to make you know an undue hardship on these restaurants go away so i i agree with you alderman o'brien i don't think seeing dennis on the umbrella is going to hurt me um so i think we should look at that and definitely move that forward. Uh, last, I just wanted to say congratulations to all of our seniors. I know we spent a significant amount of time on Bishop Gurdon, but all of our seniors um, are, are going through graduation in a very different uh, setting. And I just want to make sure that they know we, we understand and uh, celebrate their accomplishments. Um, and then I would just end with, I want it to be clear that my 
no vote was not against the fireworks at Bishop Gurdon. Um, I understand what they're doing there. I just want to make sure as we continue to work the way we're working both remotely and through this crisis that we're being very discerning about what we decide to spend the rules on and we do still spend the time in the committee doing the work. So I know every, I, I know everyone feels similarly, but I just wanted to say that and uh, that concludes my remarks. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Jetty. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Um, you know, I, I think that um, we've had a, a long tradition of uh, allowing public comment uh, at our meetings, um, and uh, which which we had to unfortunately suspend because of the of, of the, the way we're doing meetings now. But um, you know, we recently had the uh, public hearing on the budget. And um, you know, I thought uh, Alderman Dowd, as chairman of the Budget Review Committee, did uh, you know a great job. Uh, you know, at that meeting, the public was able to um, to speak. Uh, you know, through the WebEx um, system. You know, for uh, just like we're able to speak now at these meetings, uh, it, I think. You know, that showed me that we are capable of allowing public comment, uh, even though we're doing these meetings um, in this new format. And, uh, you know, I would like to, to recommend that we, that we restore the, uh, the public comment periods uh, as provided in, in Section 514A, uh, subparagraph 9A and, and 16. And, um, I would encourage uh, you, Madam President, to talk to the IT department about, you know, I th whether or not, not that can be done. I, I think the budget review public hearing showed that it can be done, and uh, so I would encourage us to to um, to explore that with uh, with the IT department. Thank you, Alderman Lopez. So with respect to the um, the idea of public comment, um, I would like to hear or see some kind of solution for that too. Um, I would be concerned about the bandwidth because I've noticed that both President Wilshire and Alderman O'Brien are on limited bandwidth, a little like alert mark next to them, which is okay with me because I think I just watched Alderman O'Brien blow his nose in low resolution, so fine with me. But um, I wanted to um, additionally, uh, express my gratitude towards the people of Nashua um, for putting up with basically all this stuff going on with COVID-19. Um, we talk about the public health professionals, we talk about the first responders and how they're putting themselves in the line, but the everyday Nashua has, has accepted enormous discomfort out of thoughtfulness for others, whether it's struggling with your children to make sure that they can pass uh, a completely reinvented school system, um, doing homeschooling, whether it's struggling economically to figure out how to make ends meet under completely new circumstances, um, or it's simple things like pulling together to make and produce masks. Um, after last week's meeting, um, I was aware that there was a protest uh, that was gonna be held on Saturday night. I was uh, being organized by anti-mask um, protesters and I was in the area, so I stopped by to talk to some of them and they were passionate. They disagreed specifically with me when I identified myself as a sponsor of the um, the mask ordinance, but they were civil and they, as much as we disagreed with where they were coming from, um, they were involved, they were sharing their opinions, and they were doing something to exercise their, their constitutional rights and their own uh, type of passion. So I appreciate that. And then the next day I was at the, um, the mask give up um, event for United Way at City Hall. Um, I agree with the, uh, the umbrella proposal because I got sunburned pretty bad. Um, but um, I was very impressed with how many people who came by and took masks just for not just for themselves, but for their loved ones, shared that they were really concerned and they were trying to make sure they could go shopping safely. Um, I asked Latha Manjapudi if she had any of her uh, homemade uh, face masks um, through the New Hampshire Masketeers, and she was able to shoot with a hundred of them right on the spot. Um, so I'm just really impressed with how people are pulling together in their own ways, whether it's making sure that we support each other in this current time of COVID-19, 
or whether we support each other in making sure that we do transition from this time. Um, because these times can't last forever. We do need to get the economy back on track. We have to do it in a way that's safe for all of our um, residents. But I think in Nashua, everybody is doing their best to look out for each other. Even if they don't all agree on the way, they are. we are a community that, that cares about each other. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Dowd. Yeah, just, just a couple things quickly. Uh, um, the last meeting I was over at the planning board and um, by the way, the fairgrounds middle school project's been approved by the planning board. Uh, but we had a 45 minute delay when we lost the bridge. We lost the bridge tonight in this meeting. I think we should have the IT department look into having two nut call in numbers um, to for people to call in uh, because the 45 minutes was almost required canceling the planning board meeting. Um, and they're trying to catch up from former cases. So, and the other thing is the, uh, this Thursday is the joint special school building committee meeting. So just, uh, so everybody that's on that committee, please uh, join us at seven o'clock on Thursday. So Alderman Dowd, you won't need to speak when I ask for committee announcements then, right? I think you've just announced them all. <laughs> I didn't see it on the agenda, so I figured I'd jump ahead. <laughs> <laughs> it's there. Anyone else uh, remarks that I've missed? Okay, now I'll call for committee announcements for all of you except Alderman Dowd. President Alderman, Wilshire. Alderman O'Brien. Uh, thank you, Madam President, and thank you to Alderman Lopez and other things with my allergies that I blew my nose on TV. <laughs> I appreciate the rudeness, uh, Alderman. Thank you. Uh, there is a meeting tomorrow night of infrastructure and PEDC jointly, and at 7 o'clock, and uh, hope to see all the uh, people there. Thank you. Alderman Karen. Yes, thank you. Uh, personnel will be holding a meeting next Monday, June 1st at seven o'clock to discuss the uh, two appointments that the mayor has brought forward today. Thank you. Thank you. Any other committee announcements, Alderman Dowd? <laughs> okay. Alderman O'Brien, do I have a motion? Uh, thank you. After all this, I think a motion to adjourn is in order. <laughs> And by roll call. Motion is to adjourn by roll call. Would the clerk please call the roll? Alderman O'Brien. Yes. Alderman Clee. Yes. Alderman Kelly. Yes. Alderman Dowd. Yes. Alderman Karen. Yes. Alderman Clemens. Yes. Alderman Lopez. Yes. Alderman Tanza? Yes. Alderwoman Lou? Yes. Alderman Jenny? Yes. Alderman Schmidt? Yes. Alderman Cleaver? Yes. Alderman Harriet Gathright? Yes. Alderman Mosher? Yes. You have 14 yeas and zero nays. Good night, everyone. We are adjourned.